Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel, The Gum Dentist. I'm your periodontist, Dr. Alan Wadamina. Let's talk about what to do after you've had dental surgery. This could be a dental implant, a tooth extraction, or some gum surgery. Let's talk about what's normal, what's not normal, and what you can do to ensure good healing and an easy recovery. Once the numbing or anesthesia starts to wear off, you're gonna start feeling a little bit of discomfort. Before your procedure, your dentist may have given you some ibuprofen, Tylenol, or maybe both, but if he didn't, well, don't worry. Just take it as soon as possible. My recommendation is 600 milligrams of ibuprofen, that's three over-the-counter capsules, and one extra strength Tylenol at 500 milligrams per capsule. So again, that's 600 milligrams of ibuprofen and 500 milligrams of acetaminophen. To ensure an easy recovery, make sure to take your ibuprofen and acetaminophen every six hours for the first three days, whether you feel anything or not. This way, you stay ahead of any residual discomfort that could be remaining. I like to recommend both of these medications together because each of them works really well in their own different way. So ibuprofen works really well for swelling but not so good for pain. It actually does okay for pain. Um, Tylenol is not so good for swelling but really good at pain. So put them together and you've got the ultimate combination. As a side note, if you have ibuprofen gel capsules or Advil gel capsules, then I'd recommend taking those one at a time and make sure you take a big gulp of water between each capsule. The reasoning behind this is that the capsules tend to stick together in your stomach. And so when they stick together, it just takes longer for them to work. And we wanna make sure that the medications work as fast as possible. Another recommendation I've got is if you can find ibuprofen sodium, this one actually works a lot faster, kicks in faster, and so that's kind of what you want in your pain medications. So if you can find this in a drugstore, not all drugstores are gonna have it. Maybe you can find it on Amazon. Um, but if you can find ibuprofen sodium, then this is the way to go. Another tip I've got is caffeine. Caffeine makes the pain medications work a lot better. So if you can drink a cup of coffee in the morning, maybe one in the afternoon, I wouldn't take it late in the day if it affects your sleep, but if you can get any amount of caffeine through Coke or tea or coffee. Caffeine makes everything better. Just as if you have just gotten hit in the face, ice does a really good job at keeping the swelling down. What I would recommend is using an ice pack and wrapping it in a thin piece of cloth or a paper towel before putting it on your face so it's a little bit more comfortable. We don't wanna put the ice pack in your mouth so you can just hold it on the outside of your face like this and just hold it there for 20 minutes on then you can take it off for 20 minutes, put it on for another 20 minutes, take it off for another 20 minutes. Just keep repeating this cycle as much as you can for the first 24 hours. Ice is the easiest way to treat swelling. Keep in mind that your pain experience is gonna be unique to you. So you can feel pain anywhere from 0% to 100%, uh, but most people are gonna be somewhere in the middle. Now, again, there's gonna be some, some people who are gonna be on the zero end, some people are gonna be on that 100 end. So um, keep in mind that all ranges of this pain threshold is completely normal. The first three to four days is when you'll have the most discomfort and swelling. After three or four days, things should start feeling a lot better. If you start noticing things get better, all of a sudden getting worse again around day seven through 14, then something's probably not right. It's likely you've got an infection. So if you are starting to feel this dull throb somewhere around day seven or 14, make sure you give your doctor a call. If it is an infection, then your doctor will likely prescribe you an antibiotic 
And once you start taking these, typically within 24 to 72 hours, you'll start feeling a lot better. If after 72 hours of taking the antibiotic, things are not getting any better, in fact, they might be getting worse, then make sure you call your doctor. If things are improving, then sometimes these infections do take a little bit longer than 72 hours, but we like to see some improvement. But if there's no improvement, make sure you do call your doctor and he'll likely either switch up the medication or put another antibiotic on top of what you already have. In terms of medications, it's really important to take all the medications that your dentist has prescribed for you. Sometimes it's really hard to remember to take your medications. So what I normally do is I just set an alarm on my phone. That way I don't forget and it, every time it rings and beeps, it just reminds me to take my medication. If your dentist has prescribed you an antibiotic, it's gonna be really important that one, you take all of it until it's completely finished, and two, that you take it with meals. This way you won't upset your stomach too much. If you have any probiotics lying around, or if you wanna buy some extra probiotics, I'd also recommend that, maybe eat some extra yogurt. That always helps. Depending on the surgery you had, you might have some stitches in there, so just try to keep your tongue away from it. The longer those stitches can stay in there, the better the outcome of the surgery. So I know your tongue's kind of got a mind of its own, but really just don't think about it. Just keep your tongue away and things will heal great. If the stitches are starting to get loose, then it's not a true emergency. It might be a little bit annoying, but maybe safer to actually just remove the really loose ones or just cut off the loose parts so that you're not constantly pulling on it every time you chew or move your tongue around. So don't be afraid to just sterilize a pair of scissors with some alcohol wipes uh, or just wash them with some soap and water if you don't have access to alcohol. But this is also really important that you don't really get too nervous if, if your stitches are coming loose. Sometimes it does happen. There are a lot of different reasons why stitches can get loose, so I wouldn't be too concerned at this point. In terms of bleeding, a little bleeding is perfectly normal. A little pink in your saliva, that's nothing to be worried about. But if things start looking really red, then it's really important at this point to stop the bleeding. We stop the bleeding by taking some gauze, fold it into a little square, bite down or put some firm pressure on that site that's bleeding and just hold it there for 30 minutes. Just remember that you don't want to keep peeking at it every one to two minutes because all you're doing is undoing the clot. So every time you look at it, your clock resets and you got to wait another 30 minutes to do it. So you might as well just stick it in there, wait 30 minutes and don't even worry about it. Turn on your favorite TV show and just sit back, relax. By the time your TV show is done, the bleeding most likely will have stopped. If at this point the bleeding still hasn't stopped, another way to stop the bleeding is to use a tea bag. You can just take a tea bag, run it under a little bit of water so that it's damp and saturated, and then stick it in the area where it's bleeding still. Tea has tannic acid in it, so the tannic acid helps blood vessels constrict. That's what we want the blood vessels to do in order for it to stop bleeding. So again, just take that wet tea bag, stick it on there, wait 30 minutes, again, maybe just turn on another TV show and forget about it. If after you try the gauze, you try the tea bag, and things are still bleeding, you haven't peeked at it, then this is the time to call your doctor, if it's truly bleeding a lot, then this is a true emergency and we have to take it really seriously. In terms of diet, I'd recommend a soft, mushy diet for the first five days. Yeah, I know it sounds boring, but we just wanna make sure that the area heals really well. When I talk about soft, mushy foods, I'm talking about mashed potatoes, yogurt, ice cream. You can even have some steamed vegetables as long as they're really soft and mushy. Eggs cooked anyway, uh, you can get smoothies, but make sure if you are gonna create a smoothie, make sure it doesn't have any berries in it because we don't want any seeds kind of getting into that area that we want to heal. These seeds oftentimes can trap bacteria and actually make healing slower. A soft, mushy diet for the first few days ensures that you don't traumatize the area and that it heals undisturbed. For the first three days after surgery, I'd also avoid any spicy um, or hot foods temperature-wise. I'd stick to lukewarm, so if you're gonna have soup, then make sure it's just a warm temperature so you don't irritate that area. After five days of soft, mushy foods, you can start transitioning into soft foods like rices, 
pastas, fish, meats. My general rule in the whole healing process is if it hurts to eat, don't eat it. So um, this goes without saying that you should avoid any hard, crunchy foods for the first two weeks. No chips, tacos, nachos, seeds, nuts, anything with a crunch in it you want to avoid for two weeks. You're going to want to keep the area really clean, but it's going to be important not to just take your toothbrush over that surgical area because you're going to really traumatize that area. What you want to do to clean the area is to use a mouth rinse. If your dentist prescribed you a mouth rinse, then you can use that. My recommendation is Listerine. It's my personal favorite. If you really don't like the burn of the Listerine, then I would recommend Listerine Zero. There's a lot of studies showing how it's antimicrobial, kills a lot of the bacteria, and this is what we want to prevent infections from happening in the mouth. Also for the first three days, I probably wouldn't do any strenuous activity, uh, exercise, any heavy lifting. If you really, really must work out, then a light workout is okay by me. If you are working out and you start feeling some dull throbbing, then that's a sign that your body's giving you to just kind of slow it down or just stop altogether and get some rest. If you smoke, then I would recommend not smoking for at least the first three days. If you can hold out for a week, that would be even better. Two weeks, even better than that. Now, I am a healthcare practitioner, so I'm inclined to tell you that maybe this is a great opportunity for you to just quit altogether. If you do quit, then things will heal so much better. So in summary, one, stay ahead of that pain. Take your ibuprofen and Tylenol, take it every six hours for three days. Two, have some gauze ready if you have some bleeding. Just bite down on it, put some firm pressure on the area, and it will stop bleeding. Three, eat soft foods for the first five days. Four, take all your medication that your doctor prescribes you. And lastly, five, get some good rest. You'll probably wanna take a day off work, especially the day of the surgery. Depending on the type of surgery, you may wanna take the next day off as well. My patients really like to have surgery on Friday. That way they have the weekend to just kind of recuperate before going back to work on Monday, but whatever schedule works best for you. In terms of what not to do after surgery, we want to one, make sure we don't play with the stitches or with the surgical area, especially with our tongue. We wanna keep our tongue away from that area as much as possible so that the area can stay and heal undisturbed. Two, don't eat any hard, crunchy foods. Three, no smoking. Four, don't brush or floss that area for two weeks. Five, no strenuous activity for the first 72 hours. Now, if you follow this guideline, I can guarantee you that things are gonna be really smooth. Feel free to ask any questions down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Thanks for joining me today. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe and like the video. If you want to know more future videos that are coming out, hit that notification bell. That way you get a notification to your device when I upload a new video. Thanks so much.